Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at a Swedish destroyer and this one is the sister of the Halland. This is the Småland. It's not Småland, there's a little little circle over the A which means it's pronounced all. So it's Småland. Uh, this is literally the sister ship of the Halland. This was one of the two Halland class, cruise, uh, Halland class destroyers that was built for the Swedish Navy in I believe somewhere in the, somewhere around the 1950s, mid 1950s. Uh, she was active until the 70s and is a museum ship today. And these ships were built around the 120 millimeter 1950 design of the uh, Bofors fully automatic dual purpose main gun. That gun was first designed for the Dutch. And I, I believe I've already mentioned that at some point during the Holland review. I would assume so, but uh, you know, it's, it's worth repeating. Uh, so th this gun was initially developed uh, for the Dutch Holland class, not to be co confused with the Holland class in the Swedes, and uh, that was the predecessor of the Frieslands. So we're actually seeing that th this is actually the Frieslands main guns. Uh, these these turrets were fully automatic. They uh, were dual purpose, so both air and uh, and surface, and uh, proved to be rather popular. Well then. So, the small end. Obviously, given that the ship was built in the 50s, it did not participate in the war or anything. But uh, we have her in the game. And the obvious first and interesting question that we're going to have to look at is, uh, how is this ship different from the Halland, which is literally her sister, which is free in the tech tree at tier 10? Because this is a tier 10 premium, so it's not going to be cheap. Well then, let's take a look. Uh... Smallland and Halland. Uh, the first thing that stands out, and honestly, sometimes I'm thinking, sometimes I'm thinking, uh, there's just a random, random ship skill generator <laughs> that throws out a jumble of things. So she gets the um, the Italian emergency uh, emergency en engine accelerator, but not the Italian uh, emergency fuel smoke, but she gets a regular fuel smoke that you would also find on the Italians, but on the cruisers <laughs> and on the battleships and uh, and on the British destroyers as well. So it, we're trading the Holland's uh, engine accelerator for for that thing. So this, this thing gives us 12% speed increase for 25 seconds. Whereas the emergency accelerator gives a 20% increase for 12 seconds, so sort of flipped around. Now, these things are not very fast to begin with, so uh, you have to take that with a grain of salt, because percentage means a percentage of the base value, and uh, the base value is not an awful lot on these things, so uh, I'm not sure about that trade. Uh, she does, however, get an additional skill, which is the fuel smoke. So we get two two charges of that, but it's a fuel smoke one, so it's a very short duration the smoke that uh, you can take with you. In, in the numbers, uh, health, health, armor, maneuverability, all pretty much the same. The guns are having a slightly shorter range than on the Holland. But in return, they have a slightly faster reload. But still, uh, they are pretty much the same otherwise. The torpedo tubes are a bit different. Uh, the Halland gets two quintuple launchers, and the Smallland gets uh, one and one triple launcher. So she's literally lost two torpedoes. These are the typical Swedish torpedoes. They're extremely fast. They're having a very high chance of flooding, but they're not doing a lot of damage individually. So you're really more relying on the combo of uh, perma floods and and fires with these things. The AA is again identical, and these are AA monsters. And the concealment is very much uh, is very very slightly worse than on the Holland. So let's have a very brief look and see how she compares to the Friesland's guns. And uh, yeah, she does a little bit more damage, even though these are technically the exact same guns and uh, has a slightly shorter range and obviously a, um, a shorter reload. So she, she, she's sort of in the middle between Friesland and Halland in terms of, of gun reload. So an extremely similar ship, I would say... Uh, uh, that's not what we want to look at. There, I would say the, um, the ship skill... Oh, and I forgot to mention, she does not get the extra heal that the Halland get. I would say the, the fuel smoke, yes, that's additional. 
Uh, I think the emergency en engine accelerator, I'd actually prefer to have the engine boost because of the longer duration and because the difference isn't going to be as as uh, as significant. And she actually has has three charges on the Halland on, uh, of that one. So I think that's actually a, at best neutral trade. I personally would say that's actually worse. Uh, she, she does trade the... Uh, the the extra heal for two for two fuel smokes, which is kind of fair enough. You could say okay, you you play a little bit more, um, you take a little less a little bit less damage because you've got the extra fuel smoke, but in return, uh, you are um, you lose a heal and uh, you lose two torpedo tubes for very slightly better guns. Okay, again fair trade. So so far this looks very very similar. But let's have a look at the uh, at the rest of the ship and see what what else we can, we can see. You get the choice between uh, the AA specialization and the elite gun operator. You could use both. I think they're both uh, they're both worth getting. Uh, I, I like doing a sort of mixed AA setup with this because doing a f you, you could do the full meme AA build with it if you were if you if you were so inclined. But if you're not playing against the carrier, then it's kind of going to waste. So you can either go full gunboat or you can sort of take the uh, the, the mixed build here. And um, I, I like the additional damage on the, on the AA from the elite bonus. Plus I am actually using the auxiliary mod because that uh, gives us more range. Now, I mean, she doesn't have secondary, so obviously not on those, but uh, on the AA, it gives us more range. You could kind of go with the main battery mod if you wanted to go for a full gunboat build, but beware that these ships only have two turrets. So if you lose one, that's 50% of your firepower gone. Uh, you could do main battery mod uh, one, but uh, I think they've got like a 30 degree per second traverse on these auto turrets. So not probably worth it. Uh, propulsion in two is a no-brainer. If for a full AA build, you would take the extra percent, extra 10% small caliber AA. Uh, this would now, if you want to go on a full AA build with these ships, it makes sense if you're frequently playing in in divisions and you're divisioning up with a carrier, then it obviously makes more sense to build it like that. So that might be one justification for having one of these things, was to say you, you're having a you're having a Holland with a more traditional build and you have a fully meme spec um, small land for for, <laughs> for carrier divisions or something like that. Uh, and yeah, you you could take the uh, the the extra the extra range here as well, given that uh, concealment. If it's a carrier battle, is probably not as important because you're going to be spotted anyway. Plus, you've got the smokes, so you could build this as a complete AA spec sort of tier ten Friesland with torpedoes and fuel smokes kind of thing. And uh, I am doing this more of the traditional build because I'm obviously looking at the random battle kind of setup that you would take. So I'm going with concealment. That gets us to uh, that gets us to AA wise uh, a four kilometer range on the large caliber AA and almost three caliber uh, three kilometers on the small calibers, plus a five point six kilometer uh, surface detection. If you throw the historical camo on that, that gives you additional torpedo range and speed because uh, sure that's what you need more torpedo speed. Uh, better traverse and surface detection. I would have loved to have uh, to have an AA camo, but um, uh, let's have a brief look at the Holland and see what the historical camo here would give us. Uh, now it's the same thing as you would get on the Holland, and yeah, there, there doesn't seem to there is a unique one for it, which is quite pretty actually, but that also doesn't do anything AA wise. So um, yeah. It's it's a good choice, but if you go for the sort of AA meme build, you may you may be able to. There should be one. Uh, which one is it? Yeah, this one. You could use the crossfire if you wanted to uh, for extra AA range, but you know it costs gold and is temporary. So uh, who who wants to do that? Uh, commander skills. You probably want the extra AA defense. It's kind of up to you because there is no sonar so and you are losing the uh, early torpedo detection you definitely want the preheating and the air defense expert i personally quite like playing with daredevil now um if you uh having more hit points restored by by heals on a destroyer which doesn't have an awful lot of hit points to begin with so the the in absolute numbers it's not going to be a lot I, I tend not to do this um 
I've got the fully prepared here because it's the only thing that makes sense. This makes a lot more sense on the uh, on the Halland, and you could argue to use the survivalist on the Halland because she's got four heals, but not on this one. Uh, exploit weakness kind of makes sense. Um, you could you could take the Mistweaver for for the cooldown because it's a fuel smoke. It's not going to make an awful lot of difference in terms of uh, actual smoke duration, but you could take it for the shorter cooldown. But then again, you only get two charges of the ship skill, so. Uh, it's not an awful lot. Uh, so I'm just taking taking Adrenaline Rush. Uh, obviously the engine overload, even though she does not get the traditional... Um, she does not get the traditional engine boost. She gets the emergency fuel. So again, this is only there for the, for the cooldown. Uh, you could, given that these are 120s, you could probably, you probably want to take the APCS to make them more effective against destroyers if, uh, if you get here. And... Uh, giant hunter probably but it doesn't make these skills are not extremely valuable on on the swedish destroyers because you don't do an awful lot of damage with the torpedoes to begin with so it's nice to have it all adds up but uh it's not something i would spend free xp on or anything so um and a ship that is extremely similar to the holland and um it, like i said the only scenario i could imagine that would kind of make sense would be to uh, to to have different setups in these two ships for for different scenarios but uh, let's try it out and and see how much difference it makes with the fuel smokes and the um the emergency engine boost and everything else now i am going to have to apologize for the number of bots in these games i have uh, i have play test played i think both of these battles on a uh, on a saturday evening uh, on the asian server which within my time zone and uh, there's just nobody there. The server is just deserted. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's a uh, maybe it's holiday times and people have other things to do. But it was extremely quiet. So we're going to get a lot of bots in these games, unfortunately. But we are up against uh, Malta, uh, Yamato, Kronstadt, and Yu Yang. So off we go on uh, the Atlantic base capture. It is a four v four, but it can get quite interesting. Uh, like I've said before, don't underestimate just because it's fewer players that there's no no tactical challenge because it's getting a lot more difficult, especially on these large maps, to secure your your flanks and everything. So uh, we're spawning on the eastern side, and uh, if the carrier, we'll see where the carrier scouts. I've got a Monty here, uh, and uh, obviously a bot Ibuki, which isn't going to be of much use to anyone. But the carrier goes straight, so the Malta is going, going straight for each other by the looks of it. No flank scout. Uh, so I am switching on the engine boost and with briefly thinking about trying to get under the under the enemy uh, airstrikes, but they're too far away. So I'm just going to go and scout out the area here. Uh, and yes, as you can see, the emergency engine boost is very, very short duration, so I'm back down to 36 knots already. These are not fast ships, which... Um, it allowed the fuel smokes allow them to pl to be played a little bit more aggressively, I would say, but uh, they, you you kind of have to mind your to mind your positioning a little. Okay, we've got uh, bot Zhao back to the HE and bot Fletcher. I, I even yeah, even if it's a bot. Oh, and we've got Kronstadt over there. So okay, let's fire at the bot and see if we can. There's no need smoking up because uh, I uh, I'm gonna try. Oh. Oh, will you look at that? The smoke works even though the bots are here. Uh, and and it stopped working, but that's proximity detection from the Fletcher. So the Fletcher took some bots, some torpedoes. These were actually meant for the Kronstadt. But okay, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Kronstadt's firing at me, so I uh, do have to be a little bit careful there. And uh, uh, that, we're going to need the first heal already. Uh, fire on the Kronstadt, he Damacons. Unfortunately, the torpedoes got caught by the bot, so... Um, uh, it is. It just is what it is. Is he firing? Uh, he's lagging a little. So uh, yeah, uh, that that salvo completely lagged. But uh, well, it is what it is. Uh, we've got. So I've got the right flank scouted, and Monty can. Monty should be able to take care of Kronstadt. We've taken. Uh, we've taken the bot Fletcher out. One thing that you'll notice is that these shots are not going where I'm aiming. Uh, the the guns are very peculiar. You'd actually have to have to aim kind of carefully, especially with the lock-on, they seem to be going a little bit all over the place rather than where I'm actually aiming at. So the uh, the vertical dispersion definitely seems a little bit off on these things. Obviously the bots is going to dodge the torpedoes, never had any hopes that that was going to work. 
but uh, we are going to be able to burn him down and just to secure the carrier because he seems uh, he seems to be quite busy elsewhere so and the monty is just sailing in a straight line full ahead uh, <laughs> never even stopped uh, so it's up to us to kill the Zhao and he should be almost down. Ow, I could have done without that. Okay, now, now Zhao is down. And we are relatively low on hit points at this stage. And uh, the left flank has a Schlieffen, but the Schlieffen is on half health. Um, uh, there's the last one alive taking out... <laughs> well, we'll see how true that will ring. Uh, take, taking out the bots over there on the enemy, enemy team. The Schlieffen is uh, suffering from the Malta the enemy mortar and but knows how to use his damacons but he is relatively low on hit points so he probably wants to recover a little because there are some torpedoes coming in from the other side and that should be that should be the yu yang if i'm not mistaken i think there was uh the, i think she was there so is the carrier taking care of that i'm not sure schlieffen is buggering off does not want to be here with uh with the yu yang uh, around and um he is relatively low on hit points, but he sees an opening. So I'm switching flanks uh, in order to, to help with the uh, Yu Yang, because the Malta might... I mean, he's on low hit points, so uh, the Malta might be able to take care of him. But I'd love for the Malta to cover for the uh, for the Schlieffen. So uh, he smokes up. That's not going to help you. I've got radar. I know that you've got radar too. And uh, I'm just trying to dodge his dodge his his gunfire because he is. I, I am on relatively low hit points, so that's why I'm using another fuel smoke. Because obviously this is a Panasian destroyer. Yes, I know you've got radar too, but <laughs> it gave me two salvos. And yeah, these torpedoes, even if they were if they were going to hit me, weren't going to do anything because these are deep waters. But we managed to win that gunfight against the Yu Yang. And uh, the uh, the um, the Malta is moving, but uh, we've secured the flank here. So, uh, the last one alive <laughs> still has his carrier. <laughs> uh, but we're now gonna... The Schlieffen is probably gonna die. Because the Schlieffen seems to be going for uh, going for the Malta. Which is good, but he was... Yeah, the Monty is dead as well. Who has been sailing in a straight line forward. And uh, decided that he wanted to, get, wanted to get into a brawl with the Yamato. Which you can possibly uh, pull off. But there goes the Schlieffen. So, uh, we're one ship ahead. And I think that's a bot destroyer on, the, on, on our team. So... Not particularly dangerous, which means it's Malta and Yama uh, versus Malta and myself. Now, fortunately, I have um, pretty decent AA. Unfortunately, I only have five thousand hit points, and I'm completely out of heals. On a on a Holland, I would have, I would have more uh, more health. So he spotted me. The second uh, torpedo wing is is looping around, trying to get a strike off, but. Uh, yeah, you don't loop around on top of one of those things, especially not if I've got the Def AA up. So, uh, yeah, these the, these planes are all going to die. Uh, and yes, that's a bot Yugomo. So, uh, definitely still open the game, uh, depending on uh, on how that that airstrike comes. Because I'm now my defensive AA is of cool is on cooldown, which means I'm not going to be able to to shoot these out of the sky before they drop. But uh, they are British, so and and he's dead. Okay, so well done, Malta. Ooh, there comes the Yamato. Okay, so he is now the last one alive, <laughs> which means it's time for me now to go undetected because the uh, we have shot down the fighters, so I should no longer be air spotted. So we'll drop some torpedoes onto him and then um, sort of let the Malta deal with him. Malta should be undetected, so I unless he gets uh, I don't know what the health what the hit points on our Malta are, but um, I think we've got this in the bag. So we'll wait for the Yamato to to, to get tired of trying to shoot at us. Let's observe his turrets. And, yeah, he's turning his turrets, uh, taking some torpedoes. That should be a flood. Yep, there goes the flood. And he, where's he going to shoot at? Uh, we're going to open up. He is shooting at the at the bot because that's what he could see. So while he's busy do, dealing with the bot, we're going to try and set some permafire. There goes the bot. So I'm probably going to be next unless Malta is spotted. But Malta is bow, is bow in and um, uh, that's probably the bot torpedo drop. Not great, but... Uh, uh, yeah, there, there come the Yamato turrets, they're turning around, so I'm going to need to turn out now and uh, run away because he can one-shot me, so I do need to dodge here and you need to be careful. It. Uh, yep, that worked. <laughs> took one, but uh, I'm going to be able to burn him down and that was it. Well played, last one alive. You um, <laughs> you made you, you gave your name all the justice. Um, so, that was fun. <laughs> but... Um, Let's uh, let's do a second one. Let's have a quick look how I, how everybody showed up and how everybody came out in the team. Uh, yeah, you've seen thirteen planes shot down, uh, and and I haven't even been 
active very much in terms of A because the Molotov was striking the other side. If I had if I had been positioned differently, that would have been a slightly different result. The second battle is a 3v3. And yes, I did mention that. Um, I don't know why, but it was extremely quiet on the server. Uh, we're up against uh, Seattle, Somers, and Harugomo on uh, Epicenter. So there are carriers, but they're bot carriers. Doesn't matter an awful lot. Now, a ship that is not particularly fast can be a little bit of a struggle in these things, but... Um, uh, the Seattle needs to get close in order to hit me reliably. Now, he obviously has radar, uh, but I, so do I. So uh, any of the enemy destroyers that are that are going to be smoking up in the center ring, I can I can point them out, and we do have a cruiser on our, on, on, on our side as well. Uh, 43 knots is what you get with the preheating and the emergency engine boost up, but uh, that's only at the beginning of the battle. Other than that, you'll be uh, sailing around at uh, comfort, comfort, uh, comfortably at cruiser speed. Yeah, we've got a Nevsky on our side, so uh, we will be uh, we will have some gunfire support, and uh, it's probably enough for us just to to uh, to highlight the targets. So I'm uh, I'm predictably dro uh, predictively dropping the torpedoes because they reload uh, pretty quickly, so I can waste that one shot easily. And uh, that Shima is... Oh, that's not a bot. No, it isn't. Okay, so that's um, that's actually a player Shima. Uh, smoke's up. I'm not sure if he was spotted, but uh, I'll take the smoke. Thank you. <laughs> not going to complain. So uh, there's Harugomo. Harugomo smokes up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's not going to help you, my friend. Obviously slowing down and reversing, but I'm going to stay in the smoke here and just start unloading at the Harugomo. And uh, hopefully the Nevsky can uh, can make can get some good shots off as well. Uh, yeah, Harungomo is a scout cruiser. You probably didn't want to be that close. Um, smoke's dissipated. That's a bot Fletcher. But uh, Harugomo is now uh, is sitting at the island. There come the Harugomo torps. So we've spotted the torps. And uh, get a couple more shots out at him. There comes. I think that was that's our Nevsky. Is it? Uh, no, no, that's a mo that's a bot Monty. Never mind. So we've, we've still got Somers in the center cup. And uh, don't underestimate uh, bots against destroyers at close range because they seem to be randomizing their uh, randomizing their ammo choices. Uh, there come the Somers torps. I uh, might want to get out of the way. Yeah, Fletcher is dead. Uh, yeah, I need to get out of the way of these. But we are holding the center cup. Um, in a in a in a battle that has so many bots, it's often it's often worth uh, not contesting the center cup in the beginning, because the uh, because the the bots are just going to rush straight ahead. So whatever bots spawn on your uh, on your on your line in the middle are going to rush the center cup by themselves. So uh, you you kind of want to have that situation sorted out before you contest the center cup. And, uh, and concentrate more on holding the on holding the outer uh, holding the other rings. So we are we are we're holding center and uh, and outer ring, but uh, there's still some dis uh, there's still some ships in the center that are contesting. But uh, that like for that Somers, for example, and uh, Shima takes out Izumo. For that Somers, it's going to get difficult because he's now pretty much alone in the center, and um, uh, at this point it's worth doing it because the bots have cleared out, but. Uh, they are one ship down and he has no support over here because the Seattle is all the way over there in the back and is not in a position from where he could uh, where he could support uh, so much smokes up I radar him <laughs> because I'm a Swedish destroyer I have radar so that should not be coming as a surprise and um, yeah I, I, I will, he's he's given up <laughs> pretty much because he is um, He's been sandwiched between uh, Shima and myself and uh, the cruiser, so he's absolutely got no chance. And now the Seattle is coming in, a little late, uh, but uh, well done, everyone. And uh, I think that's pretty much game, unless the Seattle can pull some, can, can pull something. But he's not in a great position there. In, a, in something like a Seattle, you want to be you want to be more on the flank lines because uh, this is center line. This is this is a this is more of a battleship position where he is. So I'm gonna start a I'm gonna start he spamming him while the Nevsky is um, is taking him under fire and is taking the return fire. Uh, Seattle needs to be close to deal with destroyers, so you want to have a you want to have a reasonably safe flanking position. Now he's starting to fire at me, but he is firing he, which uh, uh, at this range the Seattle is gonna struggle actually hitting me. Uh, because if you're uh, because of the extremely high uh, extremely high hang time and yeah he has no chance absolutely no chance to um, to take us on here 
And that just leaves uh, uh, the midway, and uh, there was one. There's one other destroyer left, so uh, I, I think there's not an awful lot going to happen anymore at this point, because we have taken. Uh, I don't know if that's the Harugumu. Uh, it could be, but um, we we have taken out pretty much the the rest of the enemy team. We're holding all three capture circles. So that gives us a bit of a moment to talk about the Smallland. Um, is it worth getting? I would say, unless you need another Halland, no. Uh, that's not because this is a bad ship, this is an excellent ship. It's just that so is the Halland. <laughs> um, and and I think, uh, she. I would say she's on par with the Halland. She's a, she's a little different, very slightly so different. Uh, you lose two of the torpedoes, you lose the extra heal, you lose out on the engine boosts, but um, you get the two fuel smokes in return. And... Uh, you get slightly faster firing guns, which is which is kind of nice. Uh, but then again, you pay with two torpedoes for that. Um, extremely similar ship, and uh, so I think if you're just playing random battles and you 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 have a Halland, then or you you're willing to grind a Halland, then there's no real good reason to get this ship. If you want to have say a Halland for for regular battles and you want to have a meme spec fully AA. Uh, uh, tier, tier 10 destroyer that you can pair effectively a, 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 Fri a Friesland that you can pair with uh, with a carrier in a carrier division for tier 10 games uh, yeah that that works and then you know you can have two of them so that's the only thing I could imagine where you would want one but other than that uh, yeah like I said excellent ship so if, if you say okay I'm never going to make it up to the to, um, up to the Halland anyway because of the grind is too long and everything and I just want to purchase one be my guest excellent ship uh, just like the Halland so um, it's a fun boat anyway that's it for me today thanks everyone and I'll see you next time bye bye